right, relating the standard and factored forms. When we look at the factored form f at x equals a x minus r x times x minus s, when we look at this factored form, it tells us some information that we need to move forwards with. For example, here, these r, the r and the s will indicate the roots that we need to be able to find the uh, where it hits the x-axis. The a value is another important piece of information. In this example here, the a would be the common factor. Standard form is the expanded form of factored form. So it's the expanded version of factored form. And if you notice here, the a here is the same a that's going to be here. So the a value is always found at the front after the equal sign. Next, the zeros of a relation. The zeros of a relation are the values for x for which a relation has the value 0, so also known as the x-intercepts. And it's also known as the roots. The zeros of a relation correspond to the x-intercepts. Another word for that is the roots. Let's look at an example and determine the coordinates of the vertex of a function. Now, note that the function I'm going to give you here is going to be a little more complicated. The reason why is you need to be used to the types of factoring we're going to do. Just like in the last unit we did a lot of factoring, we're going to look and continue on with the factoring. All right, now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to zap to the vertex. Now, if you learned how to find the vertex last year a different way, that's great. But we're going to find it through a backdoor way to find the vertex. So imagine, this is what we're actually going to do. So I'm just going to give you a picture of a parabola here. The picture of a random parabola drawn in this way. Now, the important features of this parabola you're going to notice are the following. Right here, this dot and this dot. What are those dots that I just created here? Well, those are zeros. And we're going to use these zeros to find the, oh, the vertex. Now, how are we going to look at that? Well, folks, what's going to be important when we look at the zeros of any parabola, just like this, we look at the zeros. And the next thing we do is we look at where the middle of that parabola is. That middle is going to be our at our axis of symmetry, the middle between the zeros. The middle between those zeros is going to be our axis of symmetry. That axis of symmetry is going to help us find where that vertex is because the middle, the axis of symmetry, tells us the x value of the vertex. Once I know the x value, I can then find the y value. So we're going to zap to the vertex by following the zap steps. And that is, let's look folks. All right, here we go, zap. Z stands for find the zeros. If we find the zeros folks, we can, that can help us find every other piece that we need. That is, F at X is equal to what we need to do with this question, 2x squared minus 5x minus 12, is set it equal to 0. Because we're trying to find the zeros means that we set the equation equal to 0. So 0 equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. And now we need to know the product and the sum. So we do some side work here, and we find the product and the sum. So the product here, folks, is negative 24, and the sum is negative 5. So how does that help us? Well, what that does is that now what we can do is find the coordinates of the vertex. So let's just move the green bar over slightly. And now we're going to find 
not the vertex, sorry, but the roots. We need to find the roots. What two numbers multiply to give us negative 24 and add to give us negative 5? Well, that is negative 8 and positive 3, because negative 8 plus 3 gives us negative 5, and negative 8 times 3 gives us negative 24. So how are we going to get negative 8 from 2 and 12? Well, from those factors of 2 and 12, I will get 2x and minus 4 to give us our negative 8, 2x and minus 4. And on the inside, I'm going to use x and pos positive 3. 2x and negative 4 gives us negative 8. 3 times x give us, gives us 3. When we add those together, that gives us negative 5x. Now, when I multiply 2x times x, that gives us 2x squared. When I multiply 2x and minus 4, sorry, three, positive 3 times negative 4, that gives us negative 12. So we can expand this to find the values. So this is called our OI check for factoring. We check our OI, the outside inside. Now, once I factor this, what I get from here is, okay, now you could do decomposition just like that, folks, negative 3x minus 8x. I'm not going to touch the decomposition because you need to understand how to factor the fast way. So what are we going to look at here? Well, what we're going to do is now we're going to look at 2x plus 3 has to equal 0 or x minus 4 has to equal 0. Why is that the case? Well, in order for a product to be 0, one of the pieces of the product, so either the bra one of the sets of brackets, has to equal 0. So we need to find the value for what x is in order to make it equal to 0. How do we do that? Well, we have 2x equals, and we're going to move the plus 3 over to the other side, becomes minus 3. And then what we're going to have is divide by 2. So you get negative 3 over 2. And that is one of our roots, our zeros. Now we go to the next one. x minus 4 equals 0. That means x is equal to 4. And that's our second zero. So what we did, folks, is we found the zeros. Now, just in the future, if you want to find the zeros faster, you can take the bracket and look at it inside and look at it in as opposite of what you see. You see, add 3, well, it's negative 3 is the root. Multiply by 2, divide by 2. So add negative 3 divided by 2. In this case, it would be positive 4 divided by 1, which is positive 4. Either way, these are our roots. What we do now is now we're going, we finished our Z step, step number one, which is we're zapping to it. So Z is the first step. Our second step is A. A stands for axis of symmetry. And that's step number two. St to find the axis of symmetry, if you remember earlier when we talked about it, to find the middle between the zeros, you have to add them up and divide by two to find the middle. So we're going to take the zeros, add them, and divide by 2. The answer we get here is x equals 5 over 4. You can actually type this into your calculator. So we get x equals 5 over 4. We've now found the axis of symmetry. What else this axis of symmetry is, is the x value of the vertex. So now we have the x value of the vertex. Mm -hmm. We have the equation. So folks, you know what we can do? Well, what we can do is uh, find, take the axis of symmetry that we just did and find the point, the vertex point. We're going to plug in the axis of symmetry into the equation to find our function. When I plug it in, we get negative 121 over 8 is the y value, so therefore our vertex is 5 over 4 and negative 121 over 8. Now this seems a little difficult and some of you might be tempted to use decimals. Decimals are not exact, fractions are. And please make sure that your fractions are in uh, 
either, sorry, in uh, not in mixed form. So they cannot be mixed. So it has to be in this type of form because if it's in mix, we're not dealing with the recipe, folks. So I need to make sure that you have it in proper form. Okay, next. Example two. The height of a football kicked from the ground is given by the function h at t is equal to the following equation, where h at t is the height in meters and t is the time in seconds from its release. You're asked now to write the function in factored form. So we're going to write the equation in factored form. So h at t is equal to, now look at the equation. Looking at this equation, you should notice that it is just common factoring that we have to do to factor this equation. So negative 5t squared plus 20t, get, you can take a common factor of negative 5t away from the equation, and this is what you get. h at t is equal to negative 5t times t minus 4. This is the equation in factored form. That's part A. Part B asks you to find when will the football hit the ground. So it wants to know when it will hit the ground. What does that mean? Well, if we have our equation, which is already in factored form because we did that in part A, we can find the zeros. Why do we need the zeros? Well, when something hits the ground, it means the height is zero. So we find out that t equals 0 from here, t equals 0, and from here, t equals 4. So we have 0 and 4. 0 seconds and 4 seconds. Well, 0 seconds means the ball hasn't even left the ground yet, folks. So it starts at 0 seconds, and then it ends at 4 seconds. So therefore, the football hits the ground after or at 4 seconds. Now, the question is, is when will the football reach its maximum height? When will it reach it? Well, to reach the maximum, it has to be halfway between the zeros. So we take one zero and add the other zero and divide by two. So t is equal to two. So what does this mean? It means that at two seconds, the football reaches a maximum height at two seconds. Hmm, what can we do with this? Well, moving forwards, we move on to the next part. D says, what is the maximum height that the ball reaches? So we already know when it reaches it. Now we need to know what that height is. Well, we take it and we plug it in. We're going to sub t equals 2. That means we need to know the height at 2. These two don't get separated. This is like y equals. y equals negative 5 times 2 squared plus 20 times 2 because we're plugging in 2 for t. So we end up getting 20 plus, sorry, negative 20 plus 40, which is 20. So the maximum height that the ball reaches is 20 meters. All right, one more. Example number three. Determine the equation of the parabola in standard form. Now, let's look more importantly at this parabola. So it's a random parabola given, but specifically you're given this value and this value. Do you see those values? What are those? Oh, that's right. You should be thinking, okay, those are my zeros. And I can see that there's dots on them. Those zeros, the roots, or the x-intercepts, okay, are important features for the uh, factored form of an equation. <clears throat> so we take the equation f at x equals a x minus r and x minus s, and we're going to sub in r equals negative 2, so this value here, negative 2, and r e s equals 3. We're going to plug it into the equation, and we're going to plug another point. Now, we could use the vertex point, but notice here it's very hard to read this vertex. 
So let's see if there's another point on this parabola that's better. Oh, there is right here. This is an actual point with a dot on it, and it gave us the coordinates. So we're going to use this information to find the equa special equation of this particular parabola. So we're going to take the point 4, 6 and sub it in for x and y into the equation. So we're going to plug it into the equation. So f at x is our y value, which is 6, is equal to a times x, which is 4. This is our x minus r, so 4 minus negative 2, and x, which is 4, minus 3. And what we're doing is plugging in. So we have 4 plus 2 and 4 minus 3. What do we have here? Well, we have 6 is equal to a times 6 times 1. So a will then equal what 6 times 1 is 6. We move it over to the other side. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So our a value, lucky for us, is only 1. So we write our equation out, which will be f at x equals 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. That is our factored form. We sub it into the Informa sub in the information. Now once we have it in factored form, we now will go back to the question. It says determine the equation of the parabola in standard form and we literally expand it. So f at x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. Combine like terms folks and we get x squared minus x minus 6. So this folks is the standard form equation of this parabola here. I know it's a little tough but we need to work on this, so complete the homework and have a numerical day.